Hi guys, welcome back to another video. First of all, Happy New Year, and thank you very much to the modder Preydog for releasing his UEVR injector just in time for the new year. So I've let all the fireworks go off. I'm now checking out this modification. I will cover a, an instance that I've personally come across with Microsoft Windows Defender. So while I entirely trust the modder on this, the way the actual injections work in um, Microsoft Windows Defender obviously doesn't like that. So you can read all about the injector mod here on uevr.io. I personally grabbed this from the GitHub. So it's got the initial beta release on on the latest releases. Tells you what you can do with it. Tells you how to how to work this. Um, personally, I just grabbed the zip file here. And the first issue that I come across on this, and it might be helpful to some to know this, when I extracted this, first of all, um, Windows will throw a bit of a wobbly in the Defender. It will immediately see the UEVR injector exe and delete it. So a very annoying quick workaround you can do for this is bring up security, just type security and Windows security, go into virus threat protection, go to the virus threat protection settings, do manage settings, and to stop it just annoyingly deleting it so quickly because it's so fast um, to get rid of this, just go into add or remove exclusions. And personally, first of all, just do the folder, do your download folder, and just click, click OK. And also the extracted folder that you've got, just do it for the UEVR in the downloads folder, do that and then it won't delete it straight away, which is what you need to do. Um, I've personally then added the actual exclusion process. I've typed the process in, but that probably doesn't matter once I've done these two, um, just to stop it being annoying. So once you've got that up and running, try run it, um, because later on when you transfer this into a different file directory, it's still gonna give you that, that warning in um, Microsoft Defender, but you at least have a few seconds to click into that notification and just allow the process so once you've got these files here you're going to need to just copy these and essentially either follow the directions on the website to how to get these mods installed or there's a really handy tool that you can use um, again I will link to the github in the video description and this is RayPal I probably mispronounced that but I'm gonna say RayPal this is basically a mod tool and a loader that will show you all of the games you've got installed or any owned games in your Steam library um, that are supported for the Unreal Engine. So again, go into the GitHub, go into the latest releases and just download this. Just download the MSI here. So once we've got those, get those installed. The Ray Power will look like this. You don't need to do anything with the UE injector mods um, yet. So any installed games you've got, um, you can just go through your list here. You can sort by engine or again, owned games, installed games. It will take a little while to refresh this list first time. Once you've got your games up and up and displayed, the injector mod you can do rather than doing it every time you want to sort of go into your directory. This tool is quite handy because first of all, it shows you what games are actually Unreal Engine. And then say, I want to inject it to Crash Bandicoot 4, for example, click on this. I can open an installed mods folder, which is the RayPal folder, copy the inject mods here, so all of the files into this, and then quite simply click run. It will automatically do this window for you and click inject for you, and all you have to do then is quite literally start the game. So that is as simple as this tool is, um, you quite literally just don't have to constantly go through your library and do it manually. You can see what games you want to mod and do it that way, which is a, a damn sight easier. Um, I would presume this mod tool is eventually going to get some pre-configured stuff as well. There is things you can change and it tells you what it's all doing in the in the code if you want to look at code. But yeah, once you've got, got the, the process running, it says waiting for Crash Bandicoot 4. Click start. And I'm already in headset, so what I'll do here is chuck my headset on. get you into OBS so you can see me, hopefully. I got my controllers. And if Steam Window is coming up on your screen, then good. 
So you can see I'm in Steam Theater mode. The menu systems come up where I can change all the um, configuration for the actual mod tool. For Crash Bandicoot, I don't believe I need to do anything with this. Um, so I can actually just get rid of that by clicking both of these thumbsticks once I'm in VR. It's insert on the keyboard until you're obviously in VR, then it will use your, your thumbsticks. Um, Pukaneer through Link isn't shown as a supported headset on the UE VR injector, but this is quite clearly working fine and it looks absolutely fantastic. So Crash Bandicoot 4, for example, is shown as Steam Theater, but don't panic. Um, it will go in and out of theater mode, um, showing you obviously your game. If I just return to game here, I now actually have controls, like an Xbox controller, on my VR controls here. So up and down on thumbsticks and A on the button. And this is the most simplest VR conversion mod you can, you can do. That's the whole point of this tool, being universal, as long as your game's Unreal Engine then you're, you're pretty much set to go. So I'm going to just skip the cutscene here and to show you this working, um, I can quite literally look behind me, which you can't do in Crash Bandicoot, you don't have a camera control. So I can see all of the bits that aren't rendered. And even though this this game, you would presume, calls the geometry, um, this is all still showing in view that you would not have in a normal game, so this is fantastic. If I move a bit forward here, I'm, I can get closer. Obviously, going to head up my desk at some point, but you have four sixed off head control. You've got the controls on your motion controllers, so it's perfectly playable to play the game like this. It's awesome. It's absolutely fantastic. So, thank you very much, Prey Dog. Um, apart from the Windows Defender stuff that was obviously throwing a bit of a, a hissy fit, this is absolutely fantastic. So, I'm going to quit my game here, and that's it, that's as simple as it is. So, there's going to be much more in-depth videos, I presume, from other YouTubers showing how to do this, but for me, I wish you all a happy new year, and have fun. Cheers, guys.